because they're going to ask you to excel on their yeah they're going to ask you to excel as well you don't have to excel on everything subscribe to bless dark for your dose of art architecture and design and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update Hey guys, welcome back to Bless Dark and welcome back to uh, episode two of Portfolio Review. We have Mariana with us today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mariana. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Hi, Rishab. It's really a pleasure to come back here, to come back to your viewers, and I would like to thank to everyone who sent the portfolio. And let's start this. Yeah, we got a lot of portfolios, and again, I had to again for this episode, I had to narrow just three down. But a lot of you had some amazing portfolios. Mariana had not seen all of the videos. A lot of people thought you were sending videos directly. I mean, uh, sending portfolios directly to Mariana. You were sending them to me. I shortlist them, and then we come to the video. But yeah, so these three are some amazing portfolios that I saw, and let's get on to discussing them. But before I do. uh let me give you a quick i know a lot of you already know mariana from the videos you follow her directly uh but let me give you a quick introduction about mariana mariana is an architect from portugal in 2015 she joined the aadrl or the design research laboratory post which she now works at za hadid architects in the competition cluster mariana also teaches online and spreads her knowledge about the software maya So today she is with us to discuss some amazing portfolios. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we start our uh, video, before we start, before we go on to portfolios, Mariana, I wanted to take your uh, take on portfolios. So uh, what do you think makes a good portfolio? What are you looking for in a portfolio? Okay, so uh, I think I want to start this by saying something really important. Uh, first, I want to say that since my um, graduation times and now, I was pretty much against portfolios. I think it is so unfair that we have to reduct ourselves and reduct our intelligence and our creativity to uh, like twenty pages on a PDF. And I felt yeah. this uh, as a student and as a professional. I still feel like this. I think it's really unfair. and it mainly happens in our creative field we expose ourselves so much and we are just waiting for a, a letter a very generic letter that says uh, you got a job or declining uh, and that is like a very hard job for everyone and for every gender it is a very hard job and i really think that it's very important for everyone to know that we are not the person who is reviewing your portfolio or me or rishab we are not the superlative entities in architecture we are not defining you as a better architect than the person the people who applied okay that's a very important thing to say so every time that an office is hiring or if you think about yourself as a director and you're hiring someone you are probably looking for something very specific and that's the reality so every time an office is hiring they have something specific in mind you don't know they most likely won't tell you but they they are looking for something specific let's like imagine that an office has a lot of people who are really good at autocad and then the office decides to invest on someone doing 3d doing rhino so they go fishing and they ask for portfolios but they are fishing like generically they are not saying Uh, we want someone for Rhino. Usually, they don't say it. So you apply without knowing, and then you get a letter, a generic letter saying, "Unfortunately, didn't get the job." Blah blah blah. But they don't tell you why. So your first feeling is, "I'm not as good as the other people. I'm not. I'm. I'm a worse architect than the people who applied." And that's not true. And the problem is, I don't think offices will ever make a portfolio reviews like we are doing they're not going to tell you we like this and not that and please fix that uh, they will forever give you a generic letter but you have to get your response and th- and move on and think okay i didn't get it next and then you find your next job or if you really like that office you'd say okay i didn't get it maybe in a couple of years i try again I- again so- see you in a couple of years Okay so it's really important to know that the person who is reviewing your portfolio is not a better architect than you is not the superlative entity in architecture and you have to make this very hard job of thinking this does not qualify me as a better architect or a worse architect than the other ones 
okay it's not about luck or bad luck i really don't like the word luck in our field it is circumstantial it's about circumstances uh, and I think that's a really important thing to say. So I want the viewers to know and uh, everyone who gave us your portfolio to know that me and Rishab are not sitting on a top chair, on a throne over here and reviewing your stuff from up. I want you to know that I'm right next to you and I'm fixing this stuff and giving you tips like fix this, fix that, that's done. Okay, send it. Okay, I'm right next to you. I'm not like, no one is above. Tips for the portfolio super quick. First thing you have to have in mind is you need to show um, the people you are applying that you need them as much as they need you. That's really important. They need to feel that they need you and their office needs you to grow. And also because like the offices are looking for something very specific, usually make sure that your portfolio either covers everything in architecture. So every stages from concept to detail. Or if you're really like something, you think that you're really good at something very specific, focus on that. So I'm really a good conceptual designer, focus on concept. And of course, you're selling yourself as a, just a conceptual artist, which sometimes it's good. I think that is a very, very uh, sound advice to keep in mind as well. Especially what you started with is the fact that people are looking for something specific. And, and you have to keep that in mind when you're applying to... Uh, uh, you know firms as well and i love uh, when you talked about luck and i whenever somebody or even i refer to luck i i always go to the definition that oprah goes by which is preparation meeting opportunity so uh, it's it's your goal is to do the preparation that is all you can do and then that there is the opportunity part and that together is what forms luck so i think this is where that comes in as well is is what the office needs you do your best, you put yourself out there and if the office needs the same thing and they both come together is is when you can get an opportunity, you know, nice opportunity to work as well. And if, did, if it didn't happen at first, it was not the best opportunity, just try again later. Join another office, come back later. Alright, so um, Mariana, we actually have more questions. I'm sure you got some questions from your story as well. I got some questions from my story about what people wanted to know about the process, about portfolios. So we'll go over those questions in between our uh, review as well. So look over those parts. And now before we get started with our first portfolio, I just wanted to let you know, do subscribe to Bless Dark. Do hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever a new video comes out. And also, Bless Dark is on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a platform that lets you uh, support creators by becoming a patron. Now, when you become a patron of Bless Dark, you also get access to more bonus videos. Videos uh, like the portfolio review. Th there's a lot of bonus content that I do not make it to the final edit because it'll be too long. So I put some of that in the bonus content. There's bonus content related to all the videos that I do. So you'll find that there as soon as you become a patron. So do consider supporting Bless Dark there. All right, now let's jump right into our first portfolio. Uh, the first portfolio is, I think for the portfolio review, we'll just call this person Ash. Let's first talk about the cover page. So uh, first impressions, what do you think about, about this cover page? Okay, so uh, this portfolio was actually the first one I saw, so I was really excited. And when you start flipping through portfolios, you start with a lot of, um, you're more positive, right? And then, uh, of course, you, you start degrading. So when I started, I was fine with the cover. Um, it looked okay. Uh, it does um, get my attention when I look at it. But then when I finished the portfolio and I saw the person behind, and I, when I understood the person behind, I also understood that uh, it doesn't make justice to uh, who you are and to your work so i would most likely spend some time upgrading this cover uh definitely upgrade the cover uh because your work is is better than the cover okay the cover shows a tiny bit of uh, naive and immaturity uh, it's a it's a cool cover it it gets people's attention but it shows something that you're probably on a higher level so just upgrade the cover Actually, I had similar thoughts about this portfolio and uh, one other portfolio that we'll discuss today is is when you go through the portfolio, you see much more ability in the portfolio. And it I, I would have loved it if, if something like that would have been on the cover as well, because we know that they can do it. 
it's not like they can't and it's it's evident in the portfolio so putting it on the cover would just take it that extra mile so going ahead in this portfolio so first thing that that popped to me and especially since the viviano video i've been looking at things a lot there's no cv here i knew you're going to say it <laughs> i think everyone will say it i knew you'd say it. yeah there's no cv i think maybe maybe she did it on purpose yeah maybe she took it out for yeah maybe for, she kept it yeah definitely yeah. you have a cv and and even like your content page where you have all of this uh, so many projects first i think it's too many projects uh, definitely too many projects but even this page like uh, i understand that you want to do this more like a magazine feel but be a bit more traditional it's fine to be traditional on your cv and like the first two pages i just want a very straightforward um information about you like a super quick what do you do what are projects where have you worked and that's it and then i start so feel feel fine like to be more traditional in your first pages we were discussing this in the last episode as well and people had eight to nine projects and we were discussing it's a lot and there are 12 here but that's exactly my problem with portfolios because it's not fair the project that you leave behind and you never know what the people who are looking at your portfolios are really looking for so that's why you give everything you can but unfortunately you have to make like a resume make something very consistent and short and and just like you said there has to be a hierarchy you do have a hierarchy of colors but what does this mean also i i would most likely start with your graduate projects and then workshops and then post uh, school projects like the real ones and then you finish with your creative stuff so have them like pretty organized i would also do that for sure all right so um let's jump into the first project so yeah what are your thoughts on this project uh i think in my opinion i really like this kind of pages and i i really think they look like competition pages nevertheless since this is a portfolio um i have a feeling that you need to kind of create a specific rhythm in the way you do your portfolio don't forget that the, the person who's looking at your portfolio is flipping it through fortunately or unfortunately in a very big speed or not and you should give like not a constant rhythm to your portfolio but like this heartbeat so in my mind i think a portfolio should give me this little break so most likely i would start with first definitely the same template for each project okay that's very important same template so i would start with project logo super simple clean page in white or in black project logo name of the project and keywords so i look at the logo it could be just a section whatever and i'm intrigued and then the next page no text no nothing just a full spread of your money shot render so when i'm flip the page of uh, of your icon of your introduction i get this bam money shot so i'm going to show you the cheat card complex in this case when i turn the page poof i'm like whoa okay like i need this small heart attacks okay and then and then i flip the page and I, I, if i'm curious i give this space for you to give me a lot of information a lot of sections a lot of drawings a lot of text so all of this text i'll probably keep it in the third page uh, since we have these digital portfolios uh, so much forget about the number of pages because they don't have any uh, weight at this point okay it's not like i'm taking the bible and oh my god this is a whole portfolio i have to go through no i just op click on a pdf i don't know i don't even know how much weight it has and then i just flip it through so just forget about the number of pages that's not important just keep short number of projects and these little rhythms into it okay so simple logo simple page make me want to flip it through so i flip the page and i have this boom big render and then I give you the space to explain and to give me all of these boring things that we need to have and then I flip it through again then bam money shot, money shot again and then I flip it through again and then you give me details give me architecture give me all the show me all your skills for my office if I want you to have as a, a technical drawer for example so in this case actually I think your money shot is not is not the one that you have here on your left your money shot it's coming after there's a render after on your second page and that's definitely your money shot. You should definitely have this render in a in a full spread. 
no text, like full respect to your work. Yeah, like this would look really good. Yeah, super good. And and whenever you have this uh, full spread, clean spread with the render, believe me, everyone who's looking at it, they understand, okay, I need to give attention to this because she is asking me for this attention. So I would definitely like be bold and have this in a single spread. And like I said, keep the same template for each project. So I understand when you start and finish the project, that's also important. So yeah, that would be my right. first comment. Let's come to our second uh, project. Actually, I really like this one. You know, I just be just because she included this. Uh, I'm assuming it's a she. I am also not sure. Okay. Let's just say they. Right. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I think that because this person, like the way um, you did this render and the way you're composing this render, is actually telling me a lot about you. Like you have a very strong social component in this page. It's actually, so it's very striking. Most likely on the next page, you see like, you can tell that there's a lot of work, but because they're like these tiny, tiny diagrams, uh, you're, not, you're not making a lot of justice to this. So I would also like get another spread and include this uh, interior render on its own. And all of these diagrams, I would increase the size definitely and rearrange this whole page. But I like the project yeah. uh, and I like where you're going with the project. Like this exploded diagrams, I cannot read it. And most likely I'm really interested to know what kind of materials you're dealing with. That's architecture. So I want to know exactly what this is and what you're thinking. So I would increase the size of this definitely. And I would keep the project. I think I, it's really weird because people are not feared about having all the projects they have done in their life in your portfolio. But it seems like they are a bit of scared of taking some pages and time to explain the project. So it's like, so here's the project. And then you say everything you have to say in the same page. And then and here's 20 projects, you know, and it's really not that. It's like, here are three projects and I have to tell you this. And then you show me like a big load of work on it. So it's more like, it's more like that. Than, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, so I've never done a real, real portfolio ever because I was so strongly against that. And mm. so what I did was exactly that. I had two little magazines, one my master from Lisbon, my master from London, and that's it, two projects. So and in these two projects, I'm gonna show you that I'm, I am able to do process and abstract design, I'm able to do architecture, I'm able to do all of these softwares, and I'm able to do uh, detailing in architecture on both two projects, okay? So it was two projects that I showed. Uh, in my portfolio so i know it's a huge risk and it is a very big risk because you're you feel like you're like kind of not showing that you're flexible enough but i mean uh you get me through everything so <laughs> kind of worked <laughs> yeah i think this mindset is something people can keep in mind is uh when you're choosing projects for the portfolio is to uh, choose the skill sets that you want to show and you know and on those basis select the projects that you want to sort of put in front of people okay so coming on to the next project which is joy social housing super cool so yeah it looks really good i am not a big fan of the font in which the the, the location and everything is written that is especially the two i think it, it may be just me it's just the two slash there is is really visible oh you're visible. so picky <laughs> nowadays i look at fonts a lot and what? the written part a lot really yeah i don't know why i like the fonts all right yeah so what are your thoughts on the project as a whole okay, okay so i i just think about this project i just think that you should keep once again a clean page saying uh, joy social housing I understand that you like doing this even artistically, putting it behind. I, I like, I understand what you're trying to show, but once again, I'll make it very simple page with an icon. And this project is so easy to make an icon out of it. And then exactly this spread and this render alone by itself with no text and no nothing, just to let me like sink in uh, the project. And then if you flip to the next uh, page, Definitely, this is one of those cases that your text has to be uh, broken into paragraphs. Uh, you should give me also another way to read it, like this diagonal reading that I told you. So use capitals, use the bold. The only thing I have to say about this project, I think it looks like a very important project. 
and it is housing which is also very important i'm definitely missing a plan i am definitely missing a plan like desperately needing a plan it's fine if you don't have a section i think sections are a bit overrated to be honest if sometimes especially in housing i don't see the point it's fine definitely a plan a plan give me a plan because i want to see how do you understand uh housing and dwelling and how do you create uh, housing and dwelling spaces because imagine that i have a project for housing in my office and i want to see what what kind of measures do you give to your live living room to your bedrooms how do you uh, manage dwelling so it's really important that you give me a full spread of one plan that's it I don't need anything else, just the standard plan of your units, your housing units. That's missing. If you don't have it, if you don't have the plan, I almost would tell you to take the project out because it looks too important. Yeah, yeah too important for you not to show me that um, you really thought about these houses. Otherwise, it's just a, sh a cool shape. When I was applying for my internship, there was a housing project that I had put in my portfolio and I had put, I had put plans and everything in, they were a little too small. That housing project in one of my interviews is what the person was asking me a lot about. So we had a Skype interview and they were asking me about the built up area. They were asking me about a lot of things and I had not brushed up on it again. So I didn't remember my any measurements. I did not remember any areas that they were sort of referring to and I was like I'm sorry I would have to sort of go back and and go through all of those things I think the reason for that again was I had too many projects in the portfolio that I had sent and to keep all of that information in my head together was a little difficult so again it would go back to you know limiting the the number of projects that you have uh, so let's continue with our portfolio yeah I like the villa number nine because it's a uh like we just spoke it's unique it uh yeah. it shows me something about you and i think you should definitely it's really important when i'm um looking at portfolios to see what you have built it's really important to know that you have knowledge in building stuff even if you don't have any knowledge in building stuff i never have before coming to zaha it's fine but if you had something mm -hmm. built make sure that that's the first information you're giving me about this project also i like the spread uh graphically a lot like the the way it's done i think it's 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 really eye catching it's minimal in, in a way and i think uh, this for me was one of the spreads that i really really liked in this portfolio portfolio but once again all of these render all of these photographs that you have especially the photograph of the interior it deserves a full spread it like and this information doesn't deserve to be all compressed in one pdf spread mm -hmm. this give this to me like clean and with no text so definitely spread this information uh, in different spreads so that's for sure uh, all of this info that all of this work that you have um, after this it really shows design research uh, technology in this case uh, a lot of them it looks a bit like robotic or all right so um uh, in from this episode onwards i i don't want to do the scoring system anymore uh, even some people had uh, told me about it in the episode one, like the scoring system, they didn't like it that much. So we'll do away with the scoring system as such. And we'll jump straight to um, your advice. I think you've already given your advice as a portfolio throughout, but is there any other piece of advice that you would like to give for this portfolio? I would just say that uh, if now you go back to the cover, you would completely understand that the cover does not make any justice to this, to you. Uh, so I would definitely, I would definitely think about the cover again. From your portfolio, I can definitely say that you are, um, you, you have very strong personality. Uh, it comes through, like it shows uh, quite a lot in your projects. It also shows that you have a very strong social uh, acknowledgement and social care and it's really important you're very ob obviously very graphic driven uh, that's really good i'm just in need of a couple of plans and the basic boring stuff but they are important because most likely you will be doing plans since you're an yeah. architect uh, it really depends on the, what kind of uh, offices you're applying to but it's really important for me to know what kind of softwares you you are um, flexible with so 
on each project I would most likely have it and I would say this to everyone I'll most likely have it in like a small note what kind of softwares you run on each project okay I think that's super super important um, and yeah and that's it also relook really at the number of projects that are here yeah exactly plus that number of projects so uh, that was Ash's portfolio then let's move on to our next portfolio of the day which is Priyan Shajmera from Jaipur yes for his portfolio also I would like to say the same thing that you said about the cover is when you go through the uh, portfolio you see uh, a lot of his ability and to me even though it's interesting it's the the cover it's not like it's not interesting at all but I think it, it again could have been much more seeing what is there inside i agree i think that it was bold that you kept the pink and pink it is a controversial color really uh i, I really like to use uh pink and it was like the color that i hated the most but it is super controversial but and you took it on i'm gonna show pink but you show the baby pink and the baby pink it's like i'm gonna use pink but i'm not sure if i should so I would definitely, if you want to keep the pink, make it like, a, you know, this red pink, a bit like stronger, a lot stronger. Mm. Okay, so completely not on the Pantone kind of uh, pastel yeah. kind of uh, domain, like a strong pink. Also, and as you go to the portfolio, his, his, his colors that he chooses are much stronger than what is on the cover page. Exactly. I'll definitely use the pink that you did uh, on, on, on forward on your project. All right, so let's come to uh, the first page, which is his CV. Uh, I would just say his, his image looks a little out of place uh, in, yeah. in the whole setting of the whole thing. Yeah, I think it's still this issue that we have. We think, are we printing this? Uh, is this a book or is this like an horizontal spread? And I would tell you, take your portfolio as an horizontal spread. To be honest, we are, you're not yeah. going to print it as much as you It's think. safe to say that we're not, in, in, especially now, nobody's going to print things so and send it to anybody. If you kind of make this a horizontal spread, your photo will be a little bit more uh, in sync with the page. Yeah. Yeah, but apart from that, I like, you have a statement, for example, and you have a couple of statements in your portfolio, but it seems like you're a bit shy about your statements and the statements are important. Like these quotes that you have, put it in the center, put it right below your photo, you know, like be bold about it. But you have all yeah. of these statements in this corner, the tiny little uh, size font, so put it like center it. It's important. I want to know who you are. Yeah, it's like having a voice, but being a little apologetic about it. But instead of that, like being a bit more bold and like putting it out there. Yeah, I think his content page works well. And also we see that uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. But then in competitions, he has three inside. So seven, eight, nine. I think it's way too many projects. Yeah. Again, this one thing I would say uh, is, is reduce it a little. Let's come to page number four is where his first project starts. So what are your thoughts here? So um, again, I would say, I know it sounds boring, but keep the same. You kept the same template to each project, which is really important. But I would say exactly the same that you said, I said about the other portfolio. Give me an icon, keywords that you actually have. Uh, and then I want to flip it through and I want to see the main image of your project. So it makes me more intrigued or not. Uh, so in this case, Actually, I don't think this is the best image of your project. The best image yeah. of this project is actually on the back of your portfolio. It's like the last page of his portfolio. It's a very cool image. I'll do that. Like I would st start with an icon, show me the whole project, and then give me the explanation, give me your axes. Um, I really praise that you kept the same template for each project and I can tell that you had that as a rule and it even makes your life easier to have like a template on your InDesign for example and then you just fit in with your projects you have placeholders and then like this project that project. Yeah. so it's important to keep the same template I, I'm just not sure if it's like the most successful template that you could but yeah, I appreciate you have the same template but uh, maybe redefine it a tiny bit all right, so um, going through the project, I like that he has spaced things out and not crammed everything into one page. There's enough, there's, there's place for everything to breathe. 
So I really, I actually really like this black and white uh, contrast. Mm -hmm. But I also think that, for example, your section, it could be, it could take more space on the screen. The thing is, whenever we make your, our images really small, we are showing our graphic skills only. You're, because I don't have, I cannot see um, the precision of your drawing. So you're showing me graphic skills. So whatever you amplify and whatever you uh, scale, uh, out, uh, or scale in, I mean, every, everything you zoom in, you want to grab my attention like to precision and to detail. So m probably this section deserves more space. I'm not sure because I cannot tell how much detail you have, but I really like the page. Like it's a cool. Like one thing that we can see in the portfolio is, is the graphic design is, is strong in the portfolio. It is strong. Yeah. All right. So let's come to the second image. As you said, the cover image, the this main image is is a really amazing illustration. Yeah, I really like this. But for example, it's so cool that it deserves like a spread with no text, with no nothing, you know, like just to make me breathe in yeah. the project. So I would definitely keep a first uh, page with the uh, with icon and keywords, and then one full spread with only this. And then if you go to the plans on page nine on PDF. So these plans are super cool. I can tell yes. just from this, from far away. The way you're putting them, it's like a big no-no. Like it's a big no. I can it. They have like a kind of a Palladio feel to it. It looks like a villa, right? Like a like a Palladio villa. And then you yeah. put it like on this page. It has a little bit of a shadow behind, as if it was really a Palladio's kind of drawing. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take all of these, all of these little assets and all of these things going on. Take them out. Just get this plan and get me a full spread of both plans. I think both plans deserve a full spread with no mm -hmm. shadows behind the page or whatever. I just want to see your graphical and your drawing skills, and I also want to see the the way you're like planning the spaces because it looks like you put a lot of thought into it. So definitely, yeah, yeah definitely give me this plan in a full spread. All right, so before we go ahead, we will take another question. Yeah, this was a pretty straightforward question. How to make a great first impression during uh, an interview, especially nowadays when the interviews are happening through Zoom. So yeah. how do you make a great first impression through your interviews? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my secrets for my interview. So before I did my interview, I actually watched a lot of uh, YouTube advices for interviews and it's just like super simple exercises like exercising your uh, mouth, exercising your voice, exercising your breathing, especially the way, so yeah. I was like this crazy person outside of the office <laughs> in like this little corner preparing like my mouth. Me, 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 my me, me, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> loud and then even in my bedroom I was almost <laughs> screaming just to prepare like to make this more flexible it's really important and yeah. because you're probably really nervous um, the way you breathe it makes a huge difference uh, on your nerves a huge difference so if you breathe really slow you're probably calm down and and another thing that I think it's important for your interview is to show it's a bit of a mix you need to show that you're humble that you're confident that you need them, uh, but they need you. They need you for their team and they need you to grow uh, their own office. And you need to show that um, yourself. I would say show that you're relaxed, but if you're not relaxed, it's fine. That's who you are, okay? So show who you are. Uh, don't show something else that you're not. That's really important. And show like this double need. I think that's really important. All right. So let's come back to the portfolio. Yeah, interior design. Yeah, so what I, I personally did not like it as much as his other projects. I agree. And I don't want the person to feel bad about it, but um, you've shown a lot of um, maturity, or what can I say, a lot of skills in other projects. And this project yeah. might be slightly misleading to who you are. Okay, because you sh yes. you're showing me that you're super contemporary. And even the way you're doing plans, yeah, I can see that you're like a forward kind of person. And this project takes me back to America, Texas. Like, I understand that you're probably good at interior design. This project is not showing it much. Take it out. Uh, up ahead, I think we have now he's put up three competition entries of his. 
uh, which yes. is the Zen library, Sehas yes. Titwa, and Story of Soil. Definitely take the Story of Soil out. Yes, I was just about to say that. There's, there's... no need. Um, Even aesthetically, it doesn't look as as a part of the whole portfolio, and there's just too much on this page. I really um, like the Zen library. I would. I really like the Zen library. I think the Zen library is kind of the opportunity that you had to show that you have a big interest on design. And yeah. this is the first hint that you give me that you want to do design. And so I really think that if you want this kind of uh, job roles, if you want to be a designer, uh, an architectural designer, take more time on this project. And I don't mean like give me more pages and more info, you have the right number of uh, content, just spread this, okay? Like this yeah. first, it's not a render or is it a render? I, this illustration, I think it deserves a full spread with no text. Exactly. Yeah, just for me to sink in and to understand what you're going to do. And then, for example, I really want to know, you did Maya, I'm pretty sure this is Maya. I really want to know what kind of software you used. So mm -hmm. once again, if you're telling me that you like design and you are design driven, tell me which softwares can you do? Uh, what, which softwares did you use for this one? Okay, tiny bit, just little time, uh, little font, size font, small, and just tell me which softwares are these. Even the next project, I think, uh, to be honest, I personally feel even if you take this one out again, because there's a lot of things that you have here and even only if somebody is going into it will they you know go through all of the information that you've provided so i think all out of the three competitions because there were also many projects i think the first one just spread that one out more and just explain that to me in much more detail than the other two yeah definitely let's come to the last part which is i think uh, i really like this part in the whole portfolio is the art and graphics because it really shows off his skills and what he can do Lonely Martian is super cool, it really, I'm pretty sure this is you. And I would keep the, um, you know, these quotes uh, right under the Lonely Martian. Uh, so the quotes yeah. that you have about your take on art, put it right under it. And then about the illustrations, I think they are cool enough also to have their own spread. And really cool work here. And then we come to the end pages where you were talking about like, uh, this is so much cooler than the uh, the image so, that we were shown in the first project. Yeah, because if, if you're telling us that this is one of the projects that you are the most proud about, the best picture of this project is here. So take this yeah. picture and have it on the cover of your project, of this project. This is definitely the best one. And I understand, uh, I understand it better. And, and you know what, like even a lot of, um, we work with very, very good landscape designers and landscape architects. And uh, I would definitely tell you that if a landscape architect sees this drawing, they can tell that you have some very good skills on landscape. On the cover of your project, of this project, this is definitely the best one. And I understand, uh, I understand it better. So yeah. I think about this portfolio, I would say that definitely you are a very sensible architect and you take a lot of um, care on details. Definitely you're a very precise architect. I can tell that you take your time on doing your technical drawings. I would probably say that you're probably a quiet person and a bit introvert, which is fine. I can understand that. So you're not super bold, uh, but when you go to your detail, you're bold on the detail, uh, which is a very good sign. Also, you gave me like this hint of design and you are design driven. You just haven't, um, you didn't have the possibility to kind of extend this um, design research interest that you have uh, yeah again uh the cover page again you could change it there's so much that you can do uh and there is the number of projects you want to reduce that and spread out things a bit more but for example for the cover i would just put like your your strong pink that's it because i like the image i would just replace the pink with the strong pink so let's come to our third portfolio of the day uh, and this is the portfolio of Claudia. So let's come to the cover page. So what are your thoughts here when you look at this cover page? 
So this is um, an example of a provocative kind of cover. Uh, so I remember that uh, when I was doing my, when I was thinking about doing my portfolio, I saw a lot of covers examples, and it was really interesting how people um, took these kind of tricks to get people's attention. So there were like this full yellow cover portfolios. Or once I saw this portfolio, they had like the big word "sex" on it. And then, of course, you'd flip it through because you're intrigued. So it's like these little yeah. tricks. Um, and then and then the guy continues saying, now that I have your attention. Uh, okay, so these things sell. Actually, I didn't like that example. But in this case, it's a bit like that. So it's like you're feeling intrigued. You're like, what? Yeah. KLG, what do you mean? Like, And it has this kind of cork kind of uh, texture on it. So... It is an intriguing cover. I would keep it exactly the way it is. Nothing to say about it. Like, definitely keep this like the way it is. Yeah. Um, as we move ahead, we come to uh, a timeline and the CV that we see here. Uh, I really graphically, I really like how everything is playing out in this spread. Mm, I love how things are very neatly arranged. Anything you want to say about it? I really like the timeline. I think it's very um, clean and, and it's very much to the point. Uh, I like the photos that you chose, yet I would rather have your face. I know it's annoying, but you always want to see the, the person behind it and, you know, that's how it works and how that's how it is. So I'd rather see your face than seeing me's uh, project. This yeah. is not me's. Isn't this like this is... um, Philip Johnson project for, for his oh, mistress? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'd rather see your face. And then I think that you did something that is really important for everyone, uh, which is you, you told me uh, how good you are uh, on um, specific softwares. You show me like um, the softwares that you do the best and the ones that you're still a beginner. That's super important. And I think everyone should do that on their portfolios. Uh, another important thing is, I think your w awards are way uh, more important than what you're showing me here. I, uh, I don't know how to make them stand out more without messing with your page layout, because your page layout is already super good. But I want to see your awards a, a little bit better. Maybe take advantage of the bold. Okay, uh, use a bit of the bolts on a couple of them. I would really, so this is again my personal, I really love the fonts chosen here. So, <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> okay, obsession with the form. All right, okay. let's come to the, our first project. Okay, first project, uh, a little bit about the same that I did on the other, um, the, same, the same thing that I said on the other portfolios. I don't, don't want to be like repeating the same thing, but I would definitely do the mm. same template. So icon, name of the project, keywords, and then I flip it, and then you hit me with a big uh, money shot render. Uh, in this case, for this project, I think that your money shot render is definitely the one that you have like on this super landscape uh, format on page uh, four. So yeah. I would definitely do like icon uh, on the first page and then bam render and then you explain me uh, what it is. And also like you always give me this icon of the winner because it's on white, it's very faded. So I might not see what it's written. Give me this big Gloria kind of icon that you have here of the price of the price that you had. And give me in black and on the white page. I know it looks like you're kind of showing yourself a bit too much, uh, but I think mm -hmm. that I think that's important. One thing that I really want to talk about in this portfolio was page number five. So I think this is a very very neat example of when people talk about putting plans in the portfolio. And I think here, for me personally, I think the colors and everything around it has come out so well that these plants look very much in place. It, the page doesn't look blank. The, I think the plants work well with the white. For me, I think I really like this minimal and having two plants. Uh, because I know a lot of people struggle with it is, is how to put plants in. And when I saw this, my first thought was, wow, this is a basic plan that is out there and yet it looks very much a part of the whole thing. 
Yeah, that's true. But you know what? Like we are architects, so I really want to see the plan as an architect. Like I want to see from where I enter, where do you organize? How do you organize space? Where is your core? You have a very like I can tell that you have a very uh, simple and clear strategy for core and functions uh, put it on the center and then you have all of the program going around the building with your facade so i want to see all of this like we are architects most of all it's not just graphics so give me this plan yeah. and this plan looks super important i don't need the the facade just give me one page with this plan in big i really want to see like because you're showing me you have good graphics you're showing me that you have awards you're showing me a lot of things i just want to see if you are also a good architect so get me this plan mm -hmm. way bigger on its own it's fine like don't be ashamed of it just give me a full plan because we want to we like to read plans we are architects we yeah. like to read it all right let's come to the next project uh, which is the air scraper about this project i would say once again, um, you're doing a bit of panels for competition, which is good, but don't forget this is a portfolio. This is the best tower that you have in your portfolio. Um, since I've seen that you worked on SOM, there's a chance that you're aiming for bigger office and bigger offices do a lot of towers. So if you have knowledge on towers, take your time on showing me your tower knowledge. So walk me through this project slower, okay? so. Don't be ashamed, be bold about it. Give me one page with only one render every time for this tower, okay? It seems really important in your portfolio, this project. So first image, first page, I'll definitely do icon, name, keywords. Second page, definitely the one that you, do, that you did. That's exactly what I mean with taking a full spread with one render. So mm -hmm. this spread that you have with a full render, that's perfect, don't touch it. And then the next one, you explain a little bit better. All of these renders that you have interiors, definitely take them for a full spread on its own. Full spread on its own. Yeah, with no shame. Um, before we move ahead, we'll do one more. Do you want to look at any of the questions that you got? Do you, did you get any interesting ones? Okay, so first of all, most of the questions that I got, uh, we covered them on our um, interview video, or YouTube video. So most of the questions are there. Um, I think everyone should just look at it again. Uh, so most of them are about how do you apply to big offices, um, what kind of softwares do you do. The one that intrigued me the most is a really important one. It says, how do you cope with stress and fatigue in this field? It's really getting to me these days. Um, so this is actually something that we don't speak much in our uh, field and it's really something yeah. important. So it turns out that we do, we are one of the fields that works the most um, in our university uh, days. Okay, so we, we do work a lot and there is competition, of course, and we feel uh, very pressured and we are also very pressured to work over time in our uh, offices. So I think there are two different strategies to work with stress and fatigue, uh, one for university, one for uh, professionals. So for the university, I would say, and, and this is just a personal advice, okay? Most of the teachers would be very angry at me, but you have to compromise a bit. So there are a couple of fields that you don't have to be that good. There are a couple of matters that you can just be average. It's fine. You don't have to excel on everything. Just understand what your future is about. Most likely it's about your portfolio and you're about your final project. Excel on that. And then the other ones, to be very fair, do the very bare minimum. Because they're going to ask you to excel on their... Yeah, they're going to ask you to excel as well. You don't have to excel on everything. If you're doing something about materials, do like you're asking me about how this brick work, it works like this. So, next. And you do your project. Okay, so that's a very important thing on your university and teachers are going to kill me, but this is a reality. And then um, when you come to office and they do ask you for a lot of extra hours, uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not very comfortable when people ask me to work um, over time. I don't like it. Uh, I think no one likes it. So uh, I would rather do it on my own. Like I would rather recognize, oh, okay, maybe I need a little bit more time on this. So I would take just, 
I will take the weekend because I think this project deserves more time or maybe I wasn't very good like during this week I need extra time so I'd rather like feel the pressure on my own and feel the responsibility of I have to work more for this because this is not enough I personally don't like to be asked to do overtime I think no one does um, yeah. and whenever you're feeling that they are really pressuring and they are really pushing for you way too much just tell them just tell them just say oh, hi uh, by the way, I'm doing too much overtime. I think this is coming a bit uh, counterproductive to our project. I might even bri uh, be bringing some uh, not very good quality to the project. So I think that for the project's sake and for my own sake, I'll have to take a tiny break, uh, full morning, a full afternoon. I think every boss, every director would understand it. And um, I kind of forget that we have that card. Uh, it's allowed to say that. It, even if you, especially if you say the project is kind of not um, com becoming better because I'm working overtime, it's actually not counterproductive. And also, like I also feel that sometimes we feel that everyone is looking at our um, at our performance, and everyone is kind of uh, having their own take on the way we are working. But to be honest, no one is watching you the same way you're watching yourself. Like no one is really looking. <laughs> To be very honest, no one is really looking. You're you're overlooking yourself. So that's also something important. Whenever you're feeling like a lot of pressure, and you're thinking, "Oh, I'm failing," and people are thinking that I'm not good, uh, most likely you're the only one who's looking at it. So, yeah. Yeah. I really like the mm. chamber chamber of secrets, especially for the name. Yes. And it shows that you smile. Before we go ahead, Mariana, have you seen Harry Potter? Do you have you seen? I mean, are you a Harry Potter fan? I have never Did seen Harry Potter. It? I've never seen it. I'm Viviano, more than Viviano. I don't think we can do this again. Potter. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, I have seen Harry. What's wrong with you, Viviano? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> All right, let's come back to the uh, folio. So, Chamber of Secrets. The name is really nice. Definitely break this into more pages. Exactly the same format I said. When I can name keywords mm -hmm. and then the main render, which I, I really like this white uh, render that you have. You could take this for actually this could be on your first spread. But you know the tiny renders that she has here, they are amazing. They are really yes. clean. They are really subtle. Uh, so I would definitely take see like you're kind of sup getting super close to see it. So we mm -hmm. don't want your your viewer to be, to be like doing this to your portfolio, okay? So take like the full spread for both renders, okay? So one spread for each render. And then we come to one very important page, which is something that everyone missed, which is a letter of recommendation. Ah, this so is the first time I'm seeing it in a portfolio though. It's the portfolio. first time that, that I can see it as well. Maybe people like keeping it like away from portfolios as like extras. But yeah. I would definitely include it on the um, portfolio PDF. I think even I did it like a side, put it aside. But I think it makes a lot more sense to like end your portfolio with your recommendation. And mm -hmm. so in this case, you have a super good SOM recommendation. I, I read it. Um, and I think like uh, they really got you and uh, they really explained and they, they were really happy with you. I would just like to say these the images that I see. Uh, I really like these images and I think you have a great Instagram feed. Do send me your handle. I would love to see it. I think you have a great feed looking at this. Okay, so Rishab is flirting a bit here. <laughs> so here was the story by the fake news. <laughs> Ignore this. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We, we can tell that. And But once again, like we, I really need to see... This is really annoying, but I really need to see your face. Okay. Uh, yeah. We really need to see faces. It's important. And then we end. And then the end. Yeah, I'm actually intrigued of uh, what is KLG and uh, KXM, which you are the founder of. So I think you forgot that, but it's fine. I, I, I'm just like personally a bit intrigued. But it's important that you keep this project because it gives me like a slight idea of, okay, you know, Grasshopper and you'd be keen yeah. on doing design research and that's good. So in the end, so the final balance of this uh, portfolio, I think that um, 
I would probably I would definitely say that Claudia is a full package kind of uh, architect. Um, she is a bit more uh, big office oriented, uh, which is fine. It doesn't say much more about her or like about the other ones, the other portfolios we saw. It's just it shows that you're probably aiming for bigger projects. So if you're aiming for bigger projects like the towers or the project that SOM typically does, uh, you are aiming for big offices. So if you're aiming for big offices, I think you should definitely take more time on your tower project, spread it a little bit longer on your portfolio. Uh, I'm really in desperate need of a little bit more architecture knowledge, as in zoom in your plans. I mean, like I can see you're good in graphics, you're a good designer. I want to know that if you are a good uh, architect all the way in. So zoom in on your plans, give me like one construction detail if you have. Give me one construction detail and give me more plans about your project as well. Um, apart from that, I think that, uh, yeah, it's a super exciting portfolio, of course. And I'm pretty sure that you, you, you'll you be fine in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that cover, that was the last portfolio for the day. And uh, so that covers all three portfolios that we did. Uh, Again, all three came out really well and the things we discussed would just take this these portfolios to another level. And one thing was in, in all portfolios, I think you all have some great visuals out there and just letting us see those visuals, be with those visuals. Uh, you know, because w once you get that visual on the screen and the full screen, you will pause and you will sort of look at the whole project and then go into the project looking at the finer details of it keeping in mind what you had seen on the main page. So that would really, you know, help the person also looking through your project and appreciate it more. Yeah, I definitely think that you have to imagine that the person who is looking at your portfolio is going to have a quick rhythm. It's going to have a very quick way to look at it. That's that's obvious. That happens with, with everyone. Even if you give your portfolio to your mom, she's going to do tak 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 tak. Everyone's going to do that. So if they have already a full speed, and they have a very high rhythm in your portfolios. Give me three projects, four projects, and give me them slower, slower. One render, one plan, one diagram, one like. So give me like a little bit of a slower rhythm. So whenever I do this, I'm a bit more intrigued. I slow down. You know yeah. what I mean? We are more in sync. And also like keep these rhythms on the portfolio. So one page with nothing, just an icon. One page with the full render, no text. One page with full explanation in case I'm intrigued. So yeah, it's for example, Claudia's portfolio, she was very consistent and but but the tone was very much the same. It was a lot of information, very good information, very good information, very good information. And that becomes slightly monotonous. So if you give me a bit of like no information, a lot of information. Absolutely no information. If you give me this, you'll keep me more engaged. So yeah, that I think ends our portfolio ep review, the second episode. Uh, I'm pretty sure while editing it, there was a lot that was left out to make this uh, video a little shorter because we've been going on at it for two hours. So, uh, but there'll be a lot more available of what we discussed and our Harry Potter discussion if you wanna listen to that. Uh, it'll be available on Patreon. Uh, you can support this channel on Patreon as well. And Mariana, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much. Again, I as we said at the start of this video, it feels like we've done, we've talked a lot of times, even though we've just done one interview together. But it, it does feel like that. And I think it does for my audience as well. Uh, they've uh, known you for a while now. And thank you so much for taking out the time today. And you have a super good audience. I think you're one of the uh, Instagram person that has one of the warmest uh, viewers. I know. Yeah, they're super yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So um, that was it, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Bless Dark. Also, if you have any questions, uh, anything, any comments, anything, because all of this as Mariana said at the, right at the start, it's not two people at a pedestal looking up or down. It is, it is, it is a discussion. It is equals looking at equals. So if you have any thoughts, anything, let me know in the comments below. And uh, I think Mariana can also jump in on some time and we can have some discussion down below in the comments. That was it. Thank you so much, Mariana. Thank you so much, everybody, everybody for watching. 
and yeah see you soon for more videos and i'll i'll try and do one portfolio review episode every month so i will reveal who the third guest is soon but nevertheless if you just want to without knowing who the guest is if you want to send in your portfolios you can send them at ba portfolio review at the rate gmail.com that is it and i will see you guys soon bye 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 <laughs> <laughs>